In what has been an incredibly wild week, Sam Altman has just reclaimed the CEO role at OpenAI. Right now, he has he's essentially has to navigate a ton of challenges and rebuild trust with a bunch of different communities. We're gonna be talking about all of that. Right now, I think it is a very significant development over at OpenAI. Sam Altman, he's been reinstated as a CEO, like I mentioned, and I think this really marks a dramatic turn in the company's leadership turmoil. So Sam Altman's return comes after some very intense negotiations. Um, you know, this is all happening against like a backdrop of complex challenges involving investors, developers, and employees. I wanna break down some of the challenges that he's gonna to have to overcome with each of these three core groups in order to essentially rebuild trust and get the company back on track because actually whether you know whether you believe it or not um, OpenAI has received some significant setbacks since all of this uh, drama has essentially been unfolding so the first thing that he's really going to have to focus on is navigating investor dynamics and really rebuilding the trust with some of his core investors one of the critical tasks that he's going to have to face is essentially balancing the interests and expectation of OpenAI's diverse investor base. So the negotiations leading up to his return involved um, some really delicate dealings with major share stakeholders, including Microsoft, of course, who owns almost 50% of the company, and investor, investors like Koshal Ventures and Thrive. The process kind of highlighted some of the intricate web of fiduciary responsibilities and really the need to ensure that all parties feel adequately, you know, quote unquote, taken care of in the evolving landscape of everything that happened. I think Microsoft was, you know, the company that essentially had the biggest concerns. Right before all of this drama unfolded, OpenAI was set to essentially raise money and sell secondary shares for some of their employees at an $80 billion valuation. Now, this is significant because Microsoft got in at a $20 billion valuation earlier this year when they bought almost 50% of the company by giving $10 billion to OpenAI. Microsoft had a serious investment and uh, you know they were about to, to do this big $80 billion valuation round. It would blow me away and shock me if they were able to do this. After everything that's happened, I think OpenAI is definitely on shakier ground. And since then, a bunch of their competitors have see, saw the blood in the water, seized their opportunity, and started releasing some really incredible updates. Anthropic, um, with their Claude 2.1 model, released a bunch of impressive updates. They have the API available, and it was ready as soon as they made the announcement for developers to start on their uh, 150,000 word uh, context window. That's like 500 pages and a bunch of other impressive things. And so uh, OpenAI is not as in strong of a position. And I think this is really putting some strain on a lot of the investors that got in. And this is going to be an area that Sam Altman's going to really have to focus on as he's now the CEO to rebuild that trust to tell them, look, we're fixing the governance. This is not going to happen again. I'm not getting kicked out in a coup and the company you know, isn't going to have 90% of its employees quit. Um, so this is something that he's going to have to deal with. For for Sam, I think this means walking a tightrope. Uh, he needs to maintain OpenAI's strategic autonomy while also ensuring that investor interests are not sidelined. This is a really delicate balancing act right now because it's kind of what he was being criticized for before his ousting. Um, and so he's really going to have to make sure that uh, they have the confidence they need from investors so they can secure the long-term financing and backing that is really going to be necessary for OpenAI's ambitious projects. Of course, they got $10 billion from Microsoft, but they're going to continue building things out. They have a lot of ambitions, and that's not going to be enough money in the long run to get them to do everything they want. So they really need to do that. The second big area is winning back employees' trust. I think Altman's return um, is also it's a response to an internal pressure, right? There was a significant portion of OpenAI's workforce over 90% that was threatening to quit over leadership issues. Um, so rebuilding trust with the company's employees, I think is gonna be pivotal. He's also going to have to engage in some really transparent communications and demonstrate a commitment to addressing the concerns that led to the initial you know, ousting. Like he has to address why he got kicked out in the first place and talk about like essentially look, uh, everyone that's part of the board and myself, we're going to work together. This is going to be better. You know, the board is getting, there's some big changes that are happening in the board as well, which I'll talk about in another episode. But I just want to talk about the fact that there is a key aspect of all of this that's going to involve really clarifying the company's direction, ensuring the employees feel that their voices are heard and valued in the company's future. Um, I think, you know, there was a moment there where essentially a lot of employees said, look, we're gonna quit if Sam Altman doesn't come back. Then Microsoft said, okay, we're gonna hire Sam Altman. And he said, okay, I'm gonna go lead, uh, you know, some, I'm gonna lead some things that are happening over at Microsoft. And a lot of people said, oh my gosh, like, 
the the board literally is not listening to us. They don't care what we say. Altman's gonna leave. They brought in this new interim CEO, which is the ex you know CEO of Twitch, and there was a lot of stress I think from the employee side, and we were seeing that play out in real time on um, X and in tweets and all that kind of stuff. So I think Altman's leadership style and decisions in the coming months is gonna be really instrumental in reestablishing a sense of stability and purpose within the team. Another thing that he's gonna have to deal with is the fact that all of his employee, a lot of his employees were about to sell secondary shares. They were going to make millions of dollars at this new $80 billion valuation. He was even paying because there was news that came out that said OpenAI was going into, you know, top Google AI researchers and was paying them five to $10 million to come on board. And with everything that happened, um, it's very unlikely that, you know, they were essentially paid in shares, but it's very unlikely that those shares are going to be worth what they were worth just two weeks ago. And so um, I think this is gonna be a really big issue that he's gonna have to deal with for employees and making sure that you know they know they're gonna be adequately compensated, especially with the share prices all falling apart. A lot of people are gonna be upset about what's going on there. Um, and I think it will be interesting to see how that all plays out. The third and final area that I think is critical that Sam Altman is going to have to fix is restoring confidence among developers and the tech community. Um, over the last week, there has been slowdowns in OpenAI. ChatGPT had a, had a day when it was down for like half a day, it felt like. I wasn't able to get on ChatGPT and do a bunch of projects I was working on. And all of this was happening while, you know, 90% of the company said that they were gonna quit. So everyone was very concerned. I saw a lot of developers, the sentiment on X and Twitter was that, like, look, I'm building these tools using OpenAI and using, uh, you know, GPT-3, and I'm trying to build these tools, but like, is this company even gonna be maintained? Is this all getting absorbed into Microsoft? Is this getting shut down? What is gonna happen? All of that uncertainty is really bad news when developers are just trying to, you know, build tools on their own, you know, platforms. They're trying to use the API access to OpenAI's tools. They did not have a lot of confidence. And in that, of course, Anthropic comes in and launches their new um, version of Claude 1.2 or 2.1, sorry, and says, hey, look, we have all these new features. It's gonna be way bigger and better than GPT-4. And here's the API. So you can immediately start integrating it. And I know a lot of developers, when I was scrolling through my feed, that were saying, look, I don't know what's happening. I found this new open source model that I'm using. Look, I don't know what's happening. I'm trying Claude. People were implementing other things. They just didn't know what was happening. And in order to gain that momentum that, they're, that they've lost here, Sam Altman's gonna have to prove to them that this is gonna be serious from now on. We're not gonna have these sort of shenanigans that make the whole company fall apart. Um, and I think that's gonna be definitely very difficult. Developers are not ones that, they, they if they lose trust, it's hard to gain it back. And so he's gonna have to be uh, very serious in, in how he approaches that. I think to win back this really crucial component, he's going to need to articulate a very clear vision for OpenAI's future and emphasize the company's commitment to innovation, ethical AI development, um, engaging with developers through really transparent communications, collaborative innovation and initiatives. And I think this all this is going to be essential in really restoring confidence and fostering a very healthy ecosystem around OpenAI's technologies. So there are challenges that lie ahead. I think a lot of them have to do with strategic, just strategic decisions and ethical considerations. Looking forward, his leadership is going to really be defined by how effectively he navigates the intricate balance between rapid technological advancements and ethical responsibility. This is what a lot of people during all of this drama were saying was like, oh, Sam Altman, he got kicked out because he was too focused on, you know, monetizing the models and wasn't focused enough on, you know, ethics and responsibility and safety and AI. A lot of this was debunked. Um, from employees and other people that knew what was going on with the board. But at the same time, you know, people are gonna be talking about this. I think OpenAI right now is really at the forefront of AI research and it faces some really critical decisions that are gonna shape not only its future, but also the broader landscape of AI technology, right? We know they're trying to develop AGI. That's what they said, artificial general intelligence is their biggest um, directive or was, of course, before Sam Altman uh, was ousted. Now that he's back, he needs to really uh, allow people to know that this is the focus. They have a clear path to this. I think, uh, you know, a lot of this is more than just a leadership change, bringing him back again, of course. I think it's a very pivotal moment for opening eye. His ability to address the complex web of investor interests, rebuilding trust with employees, re-engaging with the developer community, and making strategic decisions while uh, making sure that they're really pushing forward to AGI is not going to be easy. So a couple things I wanted to bring up um, in all of this. A lot of this had to do, a lot of like the success of bringing him back had to do with Microsoft, the CEO of Microsoft, Nadella, uh, really 
uh, going to bat for Sam. Um, a lot of people are saying, you know, like, uh, when when essentially Microsoft hired Op or Sam Altman and said, okay, he's going to come and lead a, a special AI division over here. Essentially, they were doing that to gain extra leverage over OpenAI because, of course, Microsoft owns 50% of OpenAI. So if Sam Altman is working um, for Microsoft, he's kind of becoming the boss anyways of OpenAI. So they kind of pulled that shenanigan. Was it accurate? Um, you know, Microsoft said, okay, if 90% of the employees are going to quit, you all have a spot. We'll give you the same compensation and you can work under Sam over here. They were doing that essentially to show the board at OpenAI that, look, you don't have a lot of negotiating power. We're going to poach all your people. Now, would they actually have done that in reality? I don't think so because um, there's like some pretty strict rules and laws around a lot of this. People are saying in California, there's actually rules against what's called quote unquote rating um, all of the employees at a company. So you can't technically do that. That being said, Microsoft had a lot of money, has a lot of lawyers, um, and they were going to be able to essentially do it and shut down OpenAI or they had the threat of that and be able to fight it out in legal courts. Even if OpenAI won, there were essentially the IP, essentially the talent was going to get transferred and I don't think they were going to have much of a chance. Now, they didn't want to do that because of course that destroys OpenAI. This is uh, for a lot of different reasons, Microsoft wants OpenAI to exist. One of them being it actually shelters Microsoft from a lot of liability. So if OpenAI is out there creating content, if it hallucinates, if there's some sort of meltdown, Microsoft can say, oh my gosh, this is terrible. We're going to put extra safeguards in place. We're not going to use it for certain use cases. Um, but the, the liability is not on Microsoft where Microsoft is a trillion dollar company. If they have OpenAI in here, it's not a startup. So people are a lot less lenient. You saw the exact same thing out of Google when Google was coming up with all their internal AI, um, any, anytime it had some sort of issue or made some sort of mistake, boom, $100 billion is getting wiped off of the balance sheet and the cap table of Google. And so Microsoft didn't want that. It's a lot easier to be like, look, we're experimenting, we're cool, we're hip, we're working with startups that are coming up with all this really innovation, innovative tech. In addition, with all of the regulatory talk that's going on right now, I think this would be very difficult to say, you know, they just acqu hired the entire open AI a company, people will say, look, you you know, you essentially bought them out. So I think there was a lot of uh, difficulties in that whole um, deal that they had to work through. It was kind of a bluff, in my opinion. Um, and so I think kind of that broader Microsoft, Sam and Greg deal and term sheet, um, it was more, th there wasn't really in any case, like when they said they were going to hire him, there wasn't like a lot of details that they were just like, look, we just, we, we agreed to work together. We're going to work out the details. I think essentially, um, Satya, the CEO of Microsoft, wanted to get some assurances, wanted to get all of this kind of stuff like like down saying, hey, look, Sam's going to come over and work with us so that by market open, um, you know, right after all this happened over like a weekend, then there was market open on Monday and he wanted to get all the assurances by Monday so that it didn't crash Microsoft's stock price. With all of this being said, I think that, uh, you know, that entire Microsoft gambit was essentially a backup plan or a negotiating tactic, really. Um, and the likelihood of it actually happening was very low. I think the likelihood of Sam Altman being, you know, a permanent employee at Microsoft was incredibly low. But I think they needed to do that in order to get the leverage over the board at OpenAI to get Sam back in. So... All that being said, Sam is now back in as the CEO of OpenAI. He definitely has his work cut out for him. This is not going to be easy. So he's got a lot of work to do on those three key areas we covered. And I think this is a re this brought up a really important lesson. Everything that is happening here brought up the important lesson for developers, for companies, and for everyone. If you are using an AI tool for, or an AI you know model for your tools, make sure that you are building things in an AI agnostic way. I'm personally building a platform called AI Box, which is a no-code AI app builder and marketplace, and we are completely AI agnostic. And I think this is really uh, important, something we did at the very beginning, meaning you can automate all of your workflows on our platform. And you know we built this in a way where if something like this were to happen, let's say OpenAI were to completely shut down, let's say you built your, your workflows with OpenAI, you'd be able to very quickly swap OpenAI for Anthropix, Claude, or for um, you know Inflections, Pi, or for Bard, or for some other model, right? You could set up backup models, um, and you can make sure that you know in the case of something like this happening, drastic things, or even just downtime on an AI model, that there's a backup that automatically switches to. We think this is incredibly important, and of course, people love the fact that when you build tools on AI Box, you can post them on our marketplace, and you receive 
a royalty. You can make money anytime people are using those tools. If you're interested in getting on the wait list for AI Box, you can go to AIbox.ai. I'll leave a link in the description um, and go get on the wait list on our website. Or if you're interested in investing in this, we've launched a crowdfunding uh, campaign over on Republic. And in the last three weeks, we've raised over $300,000. Um, so if you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description there. You can find out more about this. But all this to say, it's really, really critical. The big takeaway from all of this is that build your AI tools in a way that they can be AI model agnostic. You can switch them out between different tools. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is a developing story. Sam is back, but he's got a lot of work ahead of him. I'll be following up and keeping you up to date on everything that he is doing, all of the details as they come out. This is a very interesting play and a lot of things have happened in the last, you know, feels like a month uh, in the AI space, but I'll keep you updated on everything as it happens into the future.